All right, we are up in the kitchen, and guess what? We are gonna make one of my all favorite dishes, Cordon Bleu. It actually uh, originates in Switzerland, so what a better place than in a Swiss restaurant. And we are um, going to get a twist on a Cordon Bleu. Yes, because usually what they do is that fill it, whether it's pork or veal or chicken, uh, you fill it with Swiss cheese and cooked ham. But the twist right here at the wine cellar in Padilla is that you get a trillion different uh, options. So what we're gonna do with magic of television, we're gonna go downstairs and I'll show you exactly how you can pick yourself if you eat here at wine cellar, the different combinations. So one, two, three. Here we are, and this is basically what I was talking about. You get to uh, choose exactly what the filling is gonna be like. So whether you want an asiago with uh, some uh, um, speck, you can have that. If you would like some really nice parmesan with um, you know some um, spicy salami from the south of Italy, you can have that. And there's a million different combinations right here at the wine cellar. What we're gonna do, we're gonna go right back up. So three, two, one. Pretty cool, huh? So now is the moment of truth and I have Chef here with me. How are you, my friend? Happy. Happy. Yeah. Okay, so let's proceed. Let's make uh, the uh, cordon bleu, please. Uh, so we bang it a little bit to make it flat, of course. And then, chef. A little bit of mustard. It will work on, not only as a, you know, just as a seasoning, but also as spice it up a little bit salt and pepper and mixed uh, spices and then we got to really spice it up with some um, Italian um, uh, salami called Vintagina which is spiced up with given the, the reddish color by cayenne paper as much as paprika. Now on top of that I chose personally the Taleggio cheese which is the softest cheese uh, from up north that has a little bit of a pungent uh, aftertaste. And uh, so we're gonna cover that. And what we're gonna do is, there we go, the chef is overlapping it with the, 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 the lower part that it becomes sort of a package like that. And the very important thing is, once it is dipped into like the super hot oil, you don't wanna risk any of the filling coming out or like sneaking out of the cordon bleu. Now, we are pretty much ready uh, to go on to next step. So basically what we're gonna do now is, yeah, please proceed. We are going to do, create the breading right around the cordon bleu. So first thing that chef does, of course, make that blue pattern uh, around the cordon bleu and that dips it right into the egg. That's gonna make, you know, the egg stick to the the flour of course and that's gonna help out for the last step which is picking up all the breadcrumbs and making sure that those breadcrumbs will be sticking right on onto that cordon bleu package that will give the uh, um, perfect uh, golden look to it and uh, it will perfectly cook and evenly in the inside with that mm, taligio cheese melting all over the place and uh, we'll be right back with the, the last uh, passage. Don't go away. Okay, Chef, we are ready for the last thing to do, which is fry it. So we're gonna deep fry the cardo bleu at uh, well, let's not forget to uh, turn the gas on. There we go. And uh, we can deep fry it. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. And so, yeah, we is, yeah, we're gonna just throw it in. There we go. Oh, look at that sizzling already and frying. All right, so basically the, the, what we need to do now is just wait that it turns like to that, you know, golden, between golden and golden brown. And that gives us uh, the signal that it's 
finished. It's ready to go and it's evenly cooked on the inside and the taligio butter has mixed nicely and evenly with the, the Italian salami, spicy salami. So I'll see you in a minute. Pretty much uh, ready, and uh, the cool thing about um, uh, this place, wine cellar in Padilla, is that they actually make their own bread crumbs. Also, what I just found out that counting the cheeses, the cold cuts, the different kind of meats, the different kind of uh, vegetable and fruits, they got exactly, and they are Swiss, so you gotta believe in 6,006 different variations. Yeah, you heard that right. So, more information about the Cordon Bleu, more information about Swiss uh, food, Italian food right here. Log on to this website hey, or call these right. number for uh, making a reservation. The chef is giving orders. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna hug in, I'm going in guys. And as Roger, the manager was saying, is that it's very important that they use yellow lemon rather than, than green lime, which we get that bitter taste to it. So I'm squeezing some of that yellow uh, lemon and I'm going in guys. So lucky me. Yeah, look at that. Fantastic. Taliju is coming out. Mm. Chef, this is the next uh, the dish we're gonna prepare, which is the wine cellar chicken fillet, the very famous wine cellar chicken fillet. So we have his uh, chef has flattened the fillet, and uh, again put some seasoning, some spices, some mustard, and now we put in the flour. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So next step is like dipping all the the chicken fillet in the flour. All right, so, so this is going to take a few minutes, so we'll be right back. Back and uh, as you can see, Roger, the manager, he he had the knife is in his, in his hand. He said, "You have to talk about the ham." So here we are talking about the ham. Roger, what what do we have here? 
That's the Jamon Iberico de Pelota, that's a Spain ham, three years old, and that's a black pig that was in the forest in the north of the Spain. And they eat only the what is mean the the, the, the black the black thing from the trees. They don't feed it by the people as natural after. And then they age it for 36 months. 36 months, mm -hmm. yes. The interesting part, and this is a little bit like Pataniangera from what I understand, or similar to it, is that uh, in, in the country from the Italian prosciuttos is that they actually serve the entire leg with the, with the, the paw itself at the very end. So, so there you go. Uh, we're going to have some of that. And I'm going to get the knife off of his hand because he looks very threatening. <laughs> Just have a quick look. In Spain, you cut the ham with a sharp knife, with a long, thin knife. You just take the knife and cut them very thin. Wow, that's paper thin. I give you one for testing. Mm. One more for the cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> 